Hello, I'm Dave Ratt, and I want to show you something really cool. Um, if you're into sound nerdy stuff and uh, are curious about um, cables, running long cables, loss of signal in long cables, the difference in sound, and running analog over data cables using uh, the CAT products from Sound Tools. We get questions about, is it okay to run analog over data cables? Data cables are designed for data and audio cables designed for audio. Uh, is that going to have a negative uh, ramification? And logic would say that um, data cables are designed to go up to 100 kilohertz, megahertz, 10 megahertz, very high frequency reproduction. Audio cables are designed for 20 to 20K. And when running extremely long lengths, we start to reach the limits and the capabilities of audio cables. Um, and that's where data cables, which are designed to carry much higher frequencies over long distances, um, should theoretically have some advantages. I figured out a really cool way to demonstrate this. And not only so that we can see it electronically, which we can on analysis equipment, but actually hear the difference between the two different cable types. And what I've done is I've built a little box. Actually, I didn't build the box. I modified a Sound Tools cat box. And it's an, it has an input here that is being driven by this little Ivy pink noise generator. And then the first two XLRs, one's an output, which is driving into one of the 12 lines of this Whirlwind W1 um, multi-core audio, standard audio snake that we use for our drive snakes when we use analog stuff for utilitarian purposes. And channel one returns from that same uh, W1 cable into the second XLR of this little box. The third XLR of this box is sending currently to channel one of this cattails, which is then going into also 100 meters but this is a four channel uh, sound tool super cat cable and it's returning into channel four or the fourth XLR of this. Now this is an AB switcher where when this little toggle switch is up it selects the first um, pair and will let us listen to the W1. When the toggle switch is down it selects the second pair and lets us listen to the super cat cable. Now this box has got an output on it as well, and this output is driving into this little mixing board, which is hooked up to this speaker that you may or may not be able to see in the video. And it's an Infinity Home Hi-Fi speaker. The microphone is right here in front, little stereo mic. You should hear it come out of your left ear. And the, it's also run into a Y adapter, which is hitting an analyzer over there, which you can't see, but um, I can see an indicator of um, the frequency response. And the way this box is wired is such that it monitors pin 2 of the send down the cable and also looks at pin 2 of the return coming back from the cable. So the pin 2 on the, on the out and pin 2 on the return are then run to this output connector. So the output is basically looking before and after and those are run, pin 2 is going to pin 2, pin two of the return is going to pin three of the output. Not unlike um, if we were to put a meter across, if we wanted to measure the voltage drop of pin two of the XLR, and I could have done pin three, but pin two of the XLR, we would put a meter probe on pin two of the send and meter probe on pin two of the return, and we could measure the voltage drop across the cable. Um, same thing as we'd measure the voltage drop across a resistor or any other um, electrical, electronic um, device. And, but instead of putting a meter attached to the beginning and end of the cable on the same wire, I actually wired it in to the mixing board so we can hear, and the meter will be our ears. It's going into this lab group and amp, LA48 here, driving this Infinity speaker. So we'll be able to listen to the voltage drop with the gain turned up and hear what's lost in the cable. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is I'm going to turn down that. We're going to listen to the pink noise as it's sent. Or not. No, I don't have it run into there. Okay, we're not going to listen to the pink noise as it's sent. We're only going to listen to the voltage drop. So with this up, 
we'll listen to the voltage drop in the W1 cable. Now, oh, in order to help us hear this, I've got the high frequency turned up. So let me turn it back down to normal. There's the pink noise. And I'm going to boost the highs a bit just to accentuate the, um, what we're listening. And the, what we're boosting is the return. This is afterwards. So it's going to affect both signals identically. That's the W1. And then when I switch here, that's the super cat. Now I'm going to flip it back and forth. You should be able to see what I'm doing. It's down. Now you should be able to hear it that on the up position it's a little brighter than the down position. And that's because we're listening to the loss and the high frequency loss in the 100 meter W1 cable, the audio cable, is more and therefore we're hearing more high frequency than there is high frequency loss in the SuperCat cable because there's less high frequency loss. It's designed to uh, transport those higher frequency signals. Now, the W1 cable is a 24 gauge wire and the SuperCat is a 26 gauge wire. So we should actually be getting more loss in the SuperCat than we are in the audio cable. And in the, you also notice the low frequency is a little louder in the SuperCat. But the loss is very flat and even in the SuperCat, whereas the loss is tilted towards the high frequency in the W1, which means that the W1 cable is rolling off the high frequency and the SuperCat is, the loss is linear across the frequency range. Um, it's very easy to add a dB on the input of whatever it's driving, whereas it's difficult to compensate for high frequency loss that changes uh, with frequency. Um, so I'm going to do another test really quick to show something else is I have a CAT7 cable here that is um, a thicker gauge wire and this is something down the line of what this is a prototype cable for what uh, sound tools will be coming out with at some point in the future um, and this is a 23 gauge connector so here's a, a 23 gauge data cable compared to a 24 gauge audio cable and we'll do that same test. We'll start with the audio cable which is up and data. And as you can I'm sure hear through the um, audio here the data cable is not only duller, which means there's less high frequency loss, but it's lower in volume because of the thicker wire gauge, um, meaning that this um, cable is superior in every regard towards transporting analog audio, even though it's a data cable. Um, all right. I thought this was super cool. Really excited about this test box. I'm going to be testing a lot more stuff with it. Um, I've got a speaker cable version as well that um, is equally exciting for hearing loss in speaker cables. And um, yeah, it's just interesting stuff. Super exciting to be able to hear these things rather than look at, uh, you know, frequency response graphs and look at the data. I mean, we can do all that, but that's um, not usually what I do. I'm more into this practical audible reference points where we're using our ears to make determinations of relevance rather than looking at numbers and spec sheets which don't always tell us the full story. Cool, cool. Uh, hope you find this interesting and I'll do some more.